Hi everyone, I'm Ian Atkinson with NASA Spaceflight, taking the reins this week for the third SpaceX Boca Chica weekly update. As always, all pictures and videos from this week were captured by Mary, aka Boca Chica Gal. Big thanks to her for providing this incredible footage. This has been another exciting week as the team pushes through the final milestones ahead of the long-awaited hop of Starship SN5. SN5 is aiming to succeed where its predecessors have failed by passing all the required testing for the 150 meter hop. While Starhopper still holds the claim for being the only vehicle to take flight at Boca Chica, SN5 will be the first Starship prototype to take to the air, at least in a planned manner, as soon as early this coming week. The week began with SN5 being pressed through a fuel test, loading the vehicle with liquid methane for the first time. This follows its successful cryogenic loading test that involved liquid nitrogen on June 30th. SpaceX also took advantage of the road being closed due to storm surge flooding to run more tests on SN5. The vehicle may have even stayed pressurized from Saturday night until Sunday morning, when Mary first noticed venting from both tanks. While SpaceX was aiming for a static fire test using Raptor SN27 as early as Wednesday, two days of cancelled road closures pushed the schedule past Elon Musk's claim of a hop later in the week. Meanwhile, at the production site, another new Starship was starting to take shape, with the common dome for Starship SN8 being spotted by Mary, along with a handy sticker to confirm its identification. The dome was later sheathed with a three-ring barrel and flipped before rolling back into the production tents for final work. This Starship will be the first full-sized vehicle to be made from 304L series stainless steel rather than the 301 series used on previous vehicles. Elon has also stated that the alloy is in a continued state of evolution, so the name 304L is, quote, more of an approximation. SN8's nose cone also continued its preparations inside the windbreak, as the other nose cones, both old and new, watched on. SN8 will be the first Starship since Mark 1 to feature a nose cone and aero surfaces. SpaceX now has an untold number of nose cones, including some that will never fly as they were built to honed construction techniques, sitting both outside near the windbreak and also under assembly inside tent number 3. Another set of new arrivals were spotted on Tuesday, as a flatbed truck of KUKA welding robots pulled into the production facility. SpaceX has been improving on its welding techniques over the evolution of Starship construction, evident when comparing the latest SN vehicles to Starship Mark 1. Speaking of Mark 1, work on the aft fins from that since-deceased vehicle continued as they were moved into place near the solar farm and food truck area for assembly into a structure of their own. Elon confirmed on Sunday that they will become a pavilion for outdoor eating. Wednesday saw SN5 return to testing with what was either a repeat, or at least an extended, version of Monday's fueling test. This time, SN5 was left fueled for longer, highlighted by the occasional double tank venting prior to detanking. Signs that the test went to plan were all but confirmed by the cancellation of the following day's road closures, which pointed to preparations for the static fire test as the next objective. Moving towards the end of the week, a week marked by a series of amazing sunrise shots from Mary, the new high bay at the production site began to gain its second level. This building follows on from the original windbreak that has since become the stacking area for nose cones, and the building that is now known as the mid-bay, 
currently housing Starship SN6. The reason for calling what is still a large building in its own right a mid-bay becomes clear now that the high bay is rising from the ground. With assembly on the second level nearing completion, this facility will still grow at least two more levels, rising to 83 meters tall, required for assembling the super heavy boosters. That's nearly twice the height of the existing mid-bay. Work continued on the high bay as forecasts began to show the soon-to-be Hurricane Hannah threatening the local area on its track towards South Texas. This saw SpaceXers begin the process of moving the array of Starship nose cones inside tent number three for protection. Despite Hannah creeping up on the Texas coast, SpaceX felt they had a small window to attempt a static fire test of SN5 on Saturday morning, as the tracking showed Boca Chica would escape the severity of the winds and rain from the hurricane's landfall. However, despite several pad clears during the early part of the test window, the roadblock was eventually removed as crews returned to the pad, pointing to a scrubbed static fire attempt, which became a scrub for the day as the weather started to deteriorate. During a gap in the weather, Mary popped out for a quick drive past the launch site and production facility, highlighting the rare sight of work halting for the storm, and even Bluezilla lowered for a rare break to protect any potential impacts of wind gusts. The latest roadblock notices point to a potential second attempt to static fire Raptor SN27 on Starship SN5 as early as Monday, pending local conditions, not least access due to some of the localized flooding on the access roads. NASA Spaceflight will aim to cover the static fire live via Mary, so be sure to follow us on Twitter at NASA Spaceflight, and subscribe with notifications on to stay in the loop as we approach the first Starship hop. You can also support what we do by becoming a channel member, with associated perks including early access clips and access to our exclusive Discord channel. And if you're a super fan, check out our new store with numerous Boca Chica themed products. Thanks for watching. This is an ever-evolving series, so be sure to let us know how we did in the comments below. We'll see you next week, and remember, be excellent to each other.